Lead welding is carried out using oxygen and a fuel gas. Whilst hydrogen and propane can be used in combination with oxygen, the fuel that is typically used is acetylene. Oxygen is supplied in a black cylinder, which has a white top, and acetylene in a shorter, maroon-coloured cylinder. For ease of storage and handling, where possible, it is advisable that both cylinders are clamped into a movable cradle to restrain them and prevent them falling over. If these are not available, secure the cylinders upright against a wall with a chain. Cylinders should never be used lying on the floor. The gases should then be snifted. This means opening the valves and releasing a small quantity of gas. This cleans the valves by blowing out any dust or debris that may have collected. Once this is complete, you need to carry out a visual check of the oxygen and acetylene regulators to ensure that they are within the five-year calibration period. And you need to check also that the dials are not damaged. Then attach the regulators to the cylinders. The oxygen connections are tightened in a clockwise direction. And the acetylene regulator is tightened with a left-hand thread, so it's impossible to fit a regulator to the wrong cylinder. Flashback arresters are fitted immediately after the gauges. This is a safety device which reacts should flame back occur due to the incorrect purging of the gases. The hoses are reinforced with multiple layers which can be damaged both externally and internally. So carry out a visual check of the hose for any cuts or damage. Only use hoses which are in good condition and fitted with hose connections attached by the manufacturer. Also check for internal damage. To do this, pull the hose taut with both hands, shoulders apart and then bring both hands together and twist at the same time and the hose should naturally unkink. If not, there could be a fault in one of the linings. If the hose passes both tests, fit them to the regulator and test for leaks using a leak detector spray on all connections. You should never ever use washing up liquid as it is oil-based and shouldn't come into contact with oxygen gases. Leak tests should be carried out every time you start work each morning and again each time you start work after a break. Once the welding equipment has been tested, turn on both gases so that they register on both regulators and set the pressure to 0.14 bar. When working with both oxygen and acetylene, it is important to be aware that oxygen is heavier than air, so it sinks to the floor, whilst acetylene, which is lighter than air, will rise, so any accidental leaks can cause different problems. Prior to lighting the flame and carrying out any welding, ensure that you have an extraction system in place and switched on, or apply an FFP3 mask to protect you from any harmful fumes. Open controls of the welding torch and light the acetylene gas with a proprietary lighter. Do not use matches or a cigarette lighter. Creating the right flame for welding is of crucial importance. To do this, you need to set a neutral flame, which is best done by eye. So with the acetylene lit, turn on the oxygen so that the inner core of the flame has a rounded tip. Too much oxygen creates an oxidizing flame, which is blue in color, whilst too much acetylene creates a dirty yellow carbonizing flame. In both cases, they permanently stain the lead weld and the adjacent sheet lead, so adjust the valves for the acetylene and oxygen on the welding torch so that it establishes a neutral flame. Once you've set the flame, you're ready to weld. When you've completed welding, turn off the torch by turning off the acetylene gas first, which will extinguish the flame straight away. But don't forget to turn off the oxygen gas. Now turn off the gas bottles, either by hand or with a valve key. It's important to check that the dials on the gauge remain the same. If they start to fall once you turn the gas off, then this could indicate a faulty gauge and you should consider replacing it. Now you need to depressurize the system. In a ventilated space, open the controls on the welding torch. Next, to speed up the operation, 
Turn clockwise the gauge controls and the content dial should start to fall first, followed by the pressure dial. When both dials are at zero, turn off the gauges anti-clockwise and don't forget to turn off the welding torch.